Well, hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. I just want to start by thanking all the attendees for taking time to join us today. And uh, we're, as always, we're definitely excited to have you have you with us today. So today's webinar is we're going to be taking a look at the SolidWorks Electrical Schematic Challenge, where we will be um, <clears throat> taking a look at, you know, a project being created in generic CAD and that same project being created in SolidWorks Electrical and efficiencies and value that can be gained from this tool. Little housekeeping to start. So if you're new to go to webinar, uh, a few things that can make your experience a little bit better. We always suggest viewing this in full screen. I would definitely suggest it for this uh, particular case because <clears throat> some of the windows might be rather small if you're not. Also regarding questions, we will, I have my counterpart, my coworker, uh, JP on the line with me and he's gonna be taking questions throughout the webinar. We'll also have some time um, Q&A at the end where we can address some questions. So as the questions pop into your head, put, put them into that questions panel. Either JP will answer them live or we can uh, address them during the Q&A session uh, if time allows. All right, so continuing on that path, we'll we'll do some introductions here. We'll come on camera real quick if I can. All right, so to introduce myself, my name is Thomas Smith. Um, I am a industry process consultant with SolidWorks, uh, focusing on our ECAD tools. Um, I'm based out of Denver, Colorado, uh, and I support all in North America. Um, been with SolidWorks about a year and a half and have, you know, about 12 years in total of design and industry experience uh, working with the ECAD tools. So glad to be with you guys today. JP? I should probably unmute myself, but I'm JP Emanuel. I am Thomas's counterpart over on the East Coast. Um, and I have been with SolidWorks for about six years uh, dealing with the electrical products. Uh, the entire time. So glad to be here with everybody. And again, I'll be on the back end. So if you have questions during this webinar, I'll be trying to answer those uh, live right there. Otherwise, we'll have some time at the end, hopefully to uh, answer some of them. Perfect. Well, thank you for the background support, JP. And uh, yeah, we'll talk to you later. All right. So let me shut off my camera and we'll get back uh, to what we're here to talk about. So I just want to start out by, you know, really addressing, you know, why we would put together, you know, this webinar content. And really it's because, you know, through my experience and, you know, working in industry and as a consultant is that there's pretty common issues that our customers and organizations are facing when it comes to their ECAD solutions. And that's typically, you know, disconnected users. Everybody works locally, independent, siloed information dated workflows the application you know is the same you know standard generic had the way that it was you know created for initially back in the 80s possibly now they've added new commands and things like that but pretty much the design tool itself is dated leading to a lack of capabilities for further automation and efficiency gains all of which you know us as the users who have to interact with this application day in and day out it can cause frustration because it seems like we are you know, not taking the best use of our time. <clears throat> so that leads us, you know, to a question. And, you know, I think the question is this, are intelligent schematic capture programs faster than generic CAD systems? And if so, how much faster? And so that's what we're here to prove out today. <clears throat> I think a good place uh, to start is when, you know, we take a look at the history of intelligent systems. Um, I think, you know, we'll start by using some obvious examples of how, you know, automation and improvements within technology have helped us be more productive. Uh, the first example, you know, and an easy place to start is when we look at the traditional typewriter and where we progressed up to, you know, Word and Word processor, where we have technology that checks for typos, we can insert tables and graphics. You know, that was a leap of technology that majority, if not all people, you know, have been on board with and have benefited from those efficiency gains. <clears throat> Bringing it a little more closer to home, as some of us on the line might have done this uh, ourselves or have at least seen a picture, but the drafting board, right? I mean, what a manual and TDS process that had to be. And then with the pendulum shift in technology, when we introduced computer-aided drafting, I mean, that was a huge leap. You know, now we have commands that, you know, ensure accuracy. We can reuse data, copy and paste, and pull dimensions. That was a huge leap, um, and it didn't stop there. 
you know, our mechanical counterparts continued to adapt and move forward with technology. And they, you know, got an um, <clears throat> adopted, you know, 3D modeling. And, you know, now they can take, not only do they have, you know, 2D representations, but they got a 3D model. We're running simulations, visualization, and getting realistic renderings and, and you know, physical properties off of these models. But, you know, what about electrical design? And, you know, the fact is, is that majority of the customers that we work with, as, you know, the point of this webinar, are still working with those traditional CAD tools. It, it surprises me that the electrical design departments have not made that same leap, you know, in the adoption of newer technology as the mechanical counterparts. And they have benefited, you know, greatly and immensely from that new technology. But a lot of the organizations, you know, when it comes to electrical design are utilizing the same tool that they have from the get-go. And, you know, that we understand that um, in, in the work you do in this field, you know this is true. It is a hard job with complex and integrated and interrelated documentation. Um, it's common to see documentation packages in the hundreds, if uh, not, you know, I mean, dozens to hundreds of sheets and pages. And normally, you know, what we, we see with that is that, you know, everybody is using disconnected tools. And so, you know, we're designing an a, in a 2D CAD tool, which is great. You know, we're taking advantages of lines and text and blocks. But then a huge slowdown in productivity occurs when we have to go external to that application and work in, you know, programs such as Excel to manage, you know, bill of materials, wire to and from. It's a very tedious and slow process and it's error prone. And then even when you take all of that, when we, when we look at change and the impact that it has, I think everybody would agree that change is painful in a standard traditional CAD environment where all those changes are manual and, you know, must be remembered uh, by the user. <clears throat> so, you know, we, we said, you know, if in fact, how much faster could, you know, a intelligent schematic purpose built tool, you know, be for organizations and through the results of this, you know, this schematic challenge, what we're going to look at here, you know, we see upwards of 300 uh, percent increase in efficiency. And I know that that is a very bold claim. But that is, you know, something that in this particular instance, you know, we're, we're going to prove out and you're going to see it firsthand. So with that, um, you know, I know some people on the line might have had some exposure to SolidWorks Electrical. Um, some of you might be uh, getting some first or yeah, some first exposure to it. So I wanted to start um, by just giving, you know, an overall real high level overview of the tool. So SolidWorks Electrical is a purpose-built schematic tool, and it was designed to help you design your systems quicker and air-free. We can facilitate this through the creation of schematics. So we create single-line, multi-line schematics. We deal with intelligence, uh, intelligent libraries in the electrical. Obviously, we're SolidWorks Electrical, but we also handle new intelligent pneumatic, hydraulic, and PNID <clears throat> data as well. All of which this is facilitated and driven around intelligent components wires, uh, symbols, and all of this is stored within libraries that are accessible to the entire team. So everybody is sharing the same data and again, taking full advantage of that intelligent environment. Not only with schematics, you know, can we generate those, but we have tools to allow for the easily creation of panel layouts, whether that's our 2D tool or our integrated 3D add-in for SolidWorks Mechanical, we can facilitate all of those types of actions. And then reports. This is really, you know, one of the areas that I think our users see the biggest advantage of when, is when we talk traditional CAD tools. Yes, we have, you know, purpose-built tools such as insert symbol, insert wire, but really the ROI at first can be felt in the reports. Because again, a lot of those, if you're using a traditional CAD tool, you're more than likely using an external program to generate those reports we automate that process. So all of the metadata is contained within the schematics. We extract that information, compile it into various tables and report types, such as bill of material, wire from to, wire labels, et cetera. And then in addition to that, we also have a different type of report called a design rule check. Essentially, this is a project audit. We can run customized um, audits or out of the box audits against our project and catch you know, common Commonly missed errors, uh, such as missing wire numbers, duplicated tags, um, over assigned contacts, 
uh, the wrong size wire gauge is connecting to a terminal, those kinds of things can be caught. We can also run calculations such as voltage drop, fill duct ratios, et cetera. So all in all, you know, we can see upwards of 50% of reduction in documentation time, uh, which is very big for those of you who have to do this every day, um, get your life back a little bit. We can nearly eliminate human error. That's due to the fact that we are solely a library driven environment. All the data, you know, we, we assume good in, good out. You put the good data in, you're gonna get the good data out. Once that's built up in the libraries and repeatedly used, you know, it, we know it's accurate and up to date. And then, you know, furthermore, we can enable collaboration uh, between our mechanical and electrical teams with our electrical add-in and allow us to share information back and forth, removing the wall um, that was between those two departments. <clears throat> All right, so you know now it's you know it's time to jump in and actually get into this challenge. So what's nice is you know I I'm the one who created the data sets uh, for both um, software. They're the same data sets. Um, you know my background uh, with this is I I started as a controls designer um, in industry. I utilized a traditional CAD tool all the way through. We adopted a, an intelligent CAD tool, so you know I I, I got to experience that. So. At one point in time, I held an AutoCAD professional certification. So, you know, when I'm in the CAD environment, I'm trying to do things that I would feel like you guys as the users who interact with the software day in and day out uh, utilize. So this is a real world example. And um, let's get into it so you guys can see firsthand what is involved here. Whoops. OK, so you're going to notice real quick before I hit the play button. Um, SolidWorks Electrical is on your left the generic CAD draft site in this case is on your right. Uh, no time changes have been made on the SolidWorks electrical side. Draft site is sped up to keep up with this time, but we'll watch and I'll talk through both as we go. So let's get this started. Goodness gracious, let's get my clicks started here. All right, guys, so you can see that the timer is ticking. Uh, one thing that's happened over here on draft site is I started a new project based off of a predefined template in there now i'm going in and creating lines uh, using you know um, offsets i'm changing those lines layer to reflect the appropriate wire type and starting to create a circuit so i'm about a minute in and creating a circuit over here on the left hand side in solidworks electrical you're going to see you know i've been in and out of some dialog boxes what i've do done is i put in all of my project information such as customer you know specifics about the project name numbers designer, engineer, et cetera. All that information is now populated into my title block as I start adding drawings. So all of that project information, again, is stored in and already populated. I haven't even got to the point of filling in my title block over here on the right side. So <clears throat> in total, I'm about three minutes in over here on draft side. I've started to put in a motor circuit. I'm pulling, as you guys can see, off of a pre-generated palette. These are intelligent you know, symbols, meaning they have attributes that I can populate. Uh, in here, I'm going in with some trim, trim commands, as I'm sure you guys have done many, many a times, and just cleaning that up. And just, again, continuing to work off of and building this circuit. Now, over here on the left on SolidWorks Electrical, I'm a minute and a half in, and I'm starting to create some drawings. So here, I'm going to put in intelligent wires. As you can see, I already have defined the correct wire style for each of these wires. I don't have to define that after the fact. These are fully intelligent with the physical properties of this wire, such as gauge, et cetera. So I'm coming over. This time, I only pulled two phases to complete the circuit, as you would see. And so again, I've, I've already started creating a fully intelligent uh, drawing, populated the title block, added some intelligent wires, and starting to build that circuit. Again, all using intelligent tools, such as insert wire. Over here in draft side, I'm six minutes in and still working on my first circuit, I'm placing components, manually editing the required attributes and performing any trim commands uh, to ensure <clears throat> you know, the, the tags align with the appropriate rung number. Over here in SolidWorks Electrical, I'm starting to place my first distribution block. Here, I actually went into a library and grabbed a manufacturer's part, which is gonna define all the metadata for that terminal connections, part numbers, et cetera, to be used in the bill of material. Now the second time I'm working off my symbol palette and pulling an intelligent motor symbol over, the same principle, I'm gonna go ahead out to my library and assign the metadata such as part number, which will drive, you know, again, the terminal associations and everything that I need for that. 
So, you know, two and a half or two minutes and 45 seconds in, I'm starting on that first circuit, but I've built in all that intelligence behind it. Going on a little bit of over nine minutes over here on the right hand side, you can see the fun task that I am performing now is the manual editing of wire numbers. So here I'm going through and ensuring that you know, all these are correct. They're changing between each component uh, that the appropriate suffixes are being made. Very time consuming and painful. I've done it. You guys have done it. You guys understand. So I'm just dropping these in. I got to make you know, those edits. Over here, back in SolidWorks Electrical, I'm three minutes in, continuing to place some intelligent components. So I got a circuit breaker put in. Here, I'm going to go grab a VFD. So this is really nice. You know, are nice. You know that VFDs have a lot of terminal connection points that got to be defined on those. This is a generic VFD symbol. So as I select the manufacturer's part based off of the terminals associated with that, those appropriate terminals are reflected in that intelligent symbol. So just coming in here to continue working on this circuit, again, I, I have snaps that allow me to align with my connection points, just as I would have snap, uh, O snaps over there in draft site. Um, again, you know, I'm just gonna put these intelligent components, but notice, you know, I'm, I'm 12 minutes and 45 seconds, 50 seconds in. I have about three circuits placed. Some of those still gotta come back and manually edit in draft site. I'm four minutes in, in electrical. I just nearly got this one circuit complete, but behind that one circuit is all that metadata that is going to populate my bill of material, my wire from to, et cetera. So, you know, already I'm leaps and bounds ahead of where draft site or generic CAD stands at 14 minutes. So I'm going to continue to populate some manufacturer's information here. I'm making a relationship between a parent and child component. So I had the contacts over there for the motor starter, and then I associated that too with the parent coil uh, there on its appropriate rung. And again, I'm placing intelligent terminals, assigning those to the appropriate terminal block so I can create terminal drawings, um, et cetera. A lot of data is going in, but again, I'm only five minutes in almost, and I got a fully intelligent you know, little circuit here. But where, what's really nice, is what I'm about to do over here in SolidWorks Electrical. So I'm gonna do a copy and paste similar to what I did over here in DraftSite to get those three circuits. But what's nice about copy and paste in SolidWorks Electrical, it's fully intelligent. I just copy and pasted, and you're gonna notice all these tags updated and remained unique. However, this particular motor needs to be sized up. So it had the part number on it before. I simply removed the part number, grab my new uh, motor that I wanna work with, and then I you know, just updated that particular circuit. So I didn't have to go in and change any attributes or anything. So copy and paste keeps it unique. So five and a half minutes in and got two circuits done. I'm 18 minutes in on the right hand side and I am working on a step down. So I've come into a transformer. I'm gonna work on creating a little uh, circuit for the cabinet doors, some lights um, and an outlet building that over here. I don't have to explain it, you guys know what I'm doing, putting symbols in, I'm going behind those symbols, editing, manually editing the attributes, trimming wires, um, et cetera, changing layers to ensure I'm on the right wire type, et cetera, all manual. Over here, I'm still working on changing uh, some of the differences between these motor circuits that I've copy and pasted. But again, I don't have to worry about the tagging schemes on any of these. I'm driving all the metadata uh, from my library. so. Six minutes in and I'm making good progress, not only because you know the, the circuit's created um, and the design's coming along, but all that, again, as I'm gonna drive this home, all the metadata uh, behind. All right, so checking in here again, let's stay in SolidWorks Electrical, because here's a nice feature. What I'm doing is putting in intelligent source and destination arrows. So I'm saying this arrow, you know, this wire can starts here and continues here, driving that intelligence of those wire numbers behind that. So once I make that association, now again, all that is those wire information is intelligently fed through those connected wires through source and destination. Super easy to manage. Um, again, compared to the manual efforts it takes on, on the CAD side can be complex. So I'm building out, you can see the same exact circuits. So I'm just going through on the left-hand side, putting that circuit in, applying part numbers. Over here in draft side, I'm 23 minutes in and still working. I got majority of the, the project will say done. I'm putting in distribution block, uh, coming in, modifying wire numbers, making sure everything's aligned and in position appropriately. So that fun you know, work that we all look forward to doing every day. And that was sarcasm if you didn't know. But you know, that, as you can see, it, it's painful and tedious, 
Um, and you guys live it in the real world. So, you know, you guys, you guys fully understand. Um, in electrical, seven minutes and 45 seconds, still, you know, building out my project circuit, just defining wires. Again, I'm ensuring that all these wires are of the appropriate wire type before I place them. And again, it knows the size, color, gauge, physical properties of these wires. Um, so all that, again, a little more dialogue boxes involved when you work over here in SolidWorks Electrical, but you know, again, we're capturing a lot of the data on the front end, dramatically adding efficiency on the back. So actually over here on the right in draft site, we've completed the work over there. And so what I've done is I've transitioned over to Excel and I'm building out my bill of material. So, you know, I have a couple columns that I'm populating, the mark, reference, description, and manufacturer. Keep it simple. But as you can see, I have to go line by line. I'm, you know, referencing this off of documentation, ensuring that what I put in my schematic is getting represented uh, inside my bill of material. It's you know, this is me physically typing or reusing information where I can. So it's error prone because it's driven by me, the human. So I'm going to populate that, but you guys know what all the effort that includes in that. Checking back in, we're going into nine minutes um, in SolidWorks Electrical, getting ready to build out that little circuit for the cabinet lights and door switches. So um, again, up here, I'm just putting intelligence. Uh, it knows snap points. I'm using ortho. Uh, to help me ensure that, you know, I'm drawing in the appropriate direction. So you have all the, the features that you're used to as far as snap, object snap, ortho mode, grid, um, et cetera. So, you know, and one thing I wanted to keep this, you know, as realistic as possible, even if it's rehearsed, you, or even when you do it in day out, you you make mistakes. It just happens. So I've made actually mistakes on both both sides. Here I'm getting ready to make a typo in my bill of material that I have to fix. So that, you know, that happens. Uh, over here in SolidWorks Electrical, I, I actually put in an extra rung. I'll have to clean that up. But, you know, so I, it's not that I intended to do these. These were actually, you know, just what happened in the course of me recording these videos. So I wanted to keep it real because this is the way it goes sometimes. But you can still see, you know, when it comes to SolidWorks Electrical, these types of changes and impacts really don't impact the overall workflow. So, um, 32 minutes in now on draft site and still populating my bill of material. So this, you know, again, this is where I think a lot of people get the frustration, you know, because we, we go to school to be engineers, we carry engineering uh, degrees, but yet, you know, we're spending over half our time or more inside of Excel typing data um, where, you know, we should really be letting the software manage that, which it does inside of SolidWorks Electrical. Um, so it really helps, you know, get you back to doing what you want to do, and that's designing, engineering, and being innovative and having that time to do that instead of manually inputting fields into a table. Okay, so we're we're letting that go here. I, I think you can see in draft side side or Excel, I have typed something where it shouldn't go, so I'll have to to fix that over here in in elect SolidWorks Electrical. I'm gonna add a little surge protector, circuit breaker. And then I should be moving on to wire numbers, which I think you guys will appreciate as you see this. So 36 minutes in on draft site. Now I'm, I've completed the build material. Now I'm doing the wire to and from, which is extremely painful. Uh, it is very manual to look at the schematic um, and go line by line for those connections. Um, over here in SolidWorks Electrical, you can see me selecting some lines. What I'm gonna do is change the wire type. So I drew those all as a single wire. Now I have components in there. So I'm going to replace these wire styles with the appropriate wire style. So you can see the intelligence built in with these wires. I simply select all those have been defined on the appropriate wires. All right. So, you know, what I'm going to do now is go over and look at a design rule check. Nothing like this has been done over here on draft site. So I'm 11 minutes in and I got these audits that I can run against my project. That's telling me I got some errors and it gives me an opportunity to fix those errors. Um, and so some of these errors are simple. I haven't applied wire numbers. So, you know, if I forgot to do that before I send it out, I can quickly hit this one button and generate all my wire numbers based off of, you know, intelligent wire numbering schemes. Uh, so none of that is manual. I don't have to worry about doing that correctly. And if I check my audit, I see all those errors are removed because I fixed those errors prior to the generation of my reports. So I'm 12 minutes in intelligent schematic and now I'm generating reports. I am 40 minutes in in draft site over here on the right and still working on those manual reports. 
Here, I, I have predefined reports built into my project. I simply select the reports I want to run, hit OK, and generate my drawings. So it's going to create the tables, place them on the, the drawings, and add those drawings to my project automatically. No manual. Again, the benefit of all of this is that the software does the work for you. We have a very powerful SQL database driving all of the intelligence of this. You can see here, you know, we got our, you know, our bill of material. Notice those motor sizes. We have a 15, a 10, and a 25 horsepower. What I'm about to do on this side, and there's my wire from two report, just so you guys can see the comparison between the two. What I'm about to do is an initiated design change. So I've done all this, but now I found out my motor size needs to change. So I have documentation created, et cetera. All I have to do in SOLIDWORKS Electrical is simply come over <clears throat> and make the change in one place. So I've removed that part number. The uh, symbol isn't related to that part number. So as I assign a new part number, in this case, a 25 horsepower motor, all those properties come over and will populate and update into the existing symbol. So that part number has been updated to reflect that. I'm also going to uh, change the part number inside of this uh, circuit breaker. So I'm 14 minutes in. I'm having trouble hearing you. My documentation and oh, somebody just thought I was talking to him. Sorry, he thought I was talking to him. Sorry. Um, so, you know, all my documentation is done. I've done this engineering change order and now I'm simply going to redo my report and all of that is updated to reflect that change all under 15 minutes. Over here, I'm 46 minutes in, in draft site and Excel. I haven't even initiated that same design change. So here I'm trying to, you know, import over here in draft site, I'm importing those tables that I just created in Excel. We all know how fun it is to work uh, with this workflow and, and positioning those correctly in my layouts. Um, over here, you're going to notice that once I updated those reports in SolidWorks Electrical, my bomb and bill of material wire to and from updated instantly. And so now I'm ready to go and generate my outputs. Over here on the right, I'm 50 minutes in and manually coming in and changing my bomb to reflect the motor and circuit breaker change. So I had to do that manually. Over here in electrical, I'm outputting my final documentation. Uh, so 15 minutes generating an intelligent PDF with hyperlinks in it so that you can easily browse that in electronic PDF. Um, over here, on, you know, 50 minutes had to re put in those tables that I updated in Excel, and now I'm going through and running, you know, my publish uh, to PDF commands. So, I, you know, I think it, it's clear to see here, you know, going through the same motions, the same data sets, the same workflows, you know, I was able, you know, in 15 and a half minutes to output a completed project in the scope of what we're looking at here in just over 50 minutes, the pr same project. Uh, inside of generic CAD. So, you know, now we're at the finish line. What does that actually <clears throat> translate to for you, the users? Well, you know, I think in this challenge, it, it's clear to see who the winner is. When you're looking at SolidWorks Electrical versus generic CAD, SolidWorks Electrical will come out uh, on top every time, in my opinion. Um, you know, so again, we are seeing averaging of 50 minutes within that data set and an averaging, you know, I rounded up of 16 minutes um, in SolidWorks Electrical. So we're seeing, you know, a three times uh, improvement in efficiency, you know, right off the bat. And as I stated before, you know, I tried to keep this as realistic as possible. And what's great about this is to anybody who is on the webinar, we have a share site where I will share these data sets and you can, you know, time trial it. You know, like I said, I used to be a user of CAD. It's been a few, or, you know, a for a few years, but I still feel like, you know, I'm pretty savvy. So I don't think I cheated in any way, but you're more than welcome to do your own time trials uh, with the data sets as well. We wanted to keep it extremely transparent um, in that regard. So, you know, just a summary really of kind of what we've talked about, you know, we, we saw some dramatic results there. And, you know, while the scope of this example was rather small, um, you know, I think you guys should find peace of mind that we larger projects are even faster. I mean, we have, you know, companies doing large scale, you know, 100 drawings plus packages and it works smoothlessly or seamlessly, I'm sorry, and smooth uh, within that. So, you know, as you think, yeah, that was small, it was easy, but we can handle and do the same things in larger projects. We can do more C ECOs and manage and facilitate that change easier, which is, again, to you guys translates, you know, to massive increases in speed. 
because we're not having to go through all those manual iterations required in our current process and workflows when it regards to change, which you know obviously leads itself to fewer errors, right? Less time checking. And you know, the ultimate question is how do you want to spend your time? And I think we all know that we want to spend our time being engineers. That's why we went to school, not to populate Excel documents. Um, so not only does SolidWorks Electrical offer, you know, proven technology, you know, that, um, you know, many of customers and organizations are taking advantage of, but we have a strong um, user group and support base. So whether that support is offered through your value added reseller or through user groups and communities online, SolidWorks community is, is very, is, it is large and you know there's a lot of resources available to you as an organization to make and ensure that you are successful so in summary you know if if you're if you're looking for a way out of the boring tedious tasks that you're doing you're tired of being buried in documentation then you know i would hope that you guys would take an opportunity uh, to look at solidworks electrical a little further um, take note that you know we there we have a lot of content available uh, regarding SolidWorks Electrical um, out there on the internet. Here is a URL that you can visit um, that's kind of a landing page specific to our electrical design offerings. And I also have my email address um, there too, if you would want to reach out. So, um, you know, that's that's the, the content that we wanted to show. Again, you know, it was, the intent was to show just, a, you know, a side-by-side -side comparison. And, uh, you know, I think, it, in my opinion, fully prove the benefits and value to be found in SolidWorks Electrical. So with that, I think we're going to open it up for, for Q&A. So we got. That's right. Yeah, we've got a couple questions here. And uh, the first one we have here for you, Thomas, is how does it handle adding a sheet within the project? Um, does it keep the downstream labeling the same without upsetting them? How does that? So yeah, depends on, yeah, we have a variety of different ways of which we can manage uh, the addition of new sheets. Um, and so, you know, part of a project is, is the project configurations behind that. In there, we can dictate, you know, the numbering scheme that each sheet should follow when it's added. We also have different structures available within that project, such as what's called a project book. And in there, you know, we can further define and control um, sheet numbering between these books. And uh, so when we add sheets, it can go into the appropriate book and fall into the appropriate place. And then again, all of this data is connected through a database. So, you know, if we did need to reorder or renumber those, we have an intelligent command. That's a single click of a button. Uh, you can facilitate that. So, um, so to add to that to a, a follow up question with that from the same, um, same person is, um, the machine itself, right? There's, it's already got information in there uh, that you don't want to change. So anything updated, there are options in the software that, if you do go to number new wires, there is a checkbox essentially that will you don't it will not remove or update anything that's already existing in the software. So if you've already built your schematic with certain parts, it will not change any of that information in there. Yep. Definitely. So yeah, it's, it, it definitely under, understands and gives you the opportunity yeah, to not modify uh, anything. So if, you know, some, a tech goes out in the field, he had to pull a new wire, he just throws a label on it, you can come back and, and assign that and not have to worry about, you know, anything getting impacted by that. So next question, uh, how do schematics link to panel layouts? routing wire diagrams um, and do terminal blocks get labeled? Uh, yes. So, you know, there's, that's a great question. And, and I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, there's a lot of things, you know, that, that was missing from this little example. But as far as, you know, a connection between a schematic symbol and its panel representation, we deal with a component. So, you know, when I place that component in, Within that, I can have the manufacturer's part number uh, assigned to it. The manufacturer's part number can define the schematic symbol representation and also the panel. But the software understands that once I place this schematic, there is a component for that schematic representation, and I just have to place the 
layout version of that. And as soon as I do, they're tied together associatively. So it pulls over all the tag information. It automatically knows what footprint to put in there, et cetera. So. Great. We have a, we have a couple more questions here. They're, they're rolling in now. Now that we're, an, we're asking questions, everybody's got their, uh, their thinking caps on. Uh, how long does it take to add a component to the library? <laughs> uh, not long at all. Um, so, you know, there's a couple fields that it, that it requires, and then there's, you know, additional fields depending on what your organization wants to track, but I'm, it's really a, a, a seamless process. So, um, you know, if you want to add an individual record as far as manufacturer's parts, we can do that. We also have an online content portal with a hundred some million part numbers down there. You can download those directly and what is it? Download and import those directly into SolidWorks Electrical without having to do anything but a couple clicks of a button and you can get, you know, hundreds of part numbers in at once. And uh, yeah, I would say if you had to put a number on it as far as time goes, I would say... 30 seconds to two minutes, depending on what you're, what you're doing um, and how fast you are. And obviously over time, that number is going to decrease, you know, your speed is going to get better because you're going to know exactly what you need to add. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, but, you know, as a user of both application or, you know, multiple, it, it, it is a user friendly process. So mm -hmm. uh, we got different, different workflows depending on what you need, but um, yeah, the, the more you do it, the better you get. So uh, how long, uh, no, that was, we just read, can you add components on the fly or is there a librarian in control? So, I mean, this is, I guess, yes and no. So it can be set up with what we call user rights. So if an organization did want to limit who can access, edit, create what, we can operate with those user rights where each user can be assigned roles and tasks that can be accomplished within it. Outside of that, if user rights are not being utilized, then, you know, each user, you know, depending on your organizational, um, you know, workflow, any user could create and add to the library. So, yes, it can happen on the fly or it can be more locked down if that type of control is required. There's nothing additional uh, to get user rights. It's built in um, so it can help lock that down or remove it if needed. Uh where is that question? I just read it and now I lost it. Uh, if I understand, we can get the same results, but with pneumatic schematics. This is I, correct. Yeah. I would so, say absolutely. Um, you just have to wrap your head around the fact that you're routing a pipe or a tube rather than a wire. Yeah. And, you know, we did a webinar on this. So, uh, you know, I, I didn't put up the link, but, you know, we can, it's out there somewhere where we did a webinar showing SolidWorks Electrical doing uh, some piping. So definitely, you know, something we can accomplish. We do, you know, ship out with libraries that contain some industry standard symbols and got some additional content up on our web portal uh, for that as well. But the same benefits, everything you saw there, the intelligent wires would be tube and piping. The symbols carry attributes that which we can extract and run reports on. All again, fully associative. So we've got one question that uh, a lot of people seem to be wanting to answer to here, um, and both of us have pretty decent experience with it, um, but and I don't want to get into a feature war because that's not what this is all about, but what do you see as maybe a highlight as far as the difference between uh, another intelligent CAD tool that we all know and SOLIDWORKS Electrical? You can read the questions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, you know, without without saying names, you know, I, I I can speak to this one relatively well. Prior to my my life in in SolidWorks, I was the other unnamed uh, resources subject matter expert. So, you know, again, I know you know each each CAD tool has their place. In my personal opinion, you know, companies aside, what I found beneficial between ours is that we're full SQL driven. Uh, the other CAD tool that is mentioned in the question, you know, they uh, use a mixed environment of access and SQL. Uh, the database isn't as reliable, as quick, as uh, responsive. Uh, you have to question the accuracy and management of associations. Um, you know, the, the source and destination arrow management and other CAD tools is not as user friendly as ours. Um, the reporting aspect is by far superior 
in our tool. With the ability to write custom queries and having access to a full SQL database, I mean, you can do some powerful things that are just not an option. And then, you know, so a real start a differentiator that we have many webinars out there on it is when you look into automation. For one, we have an open API. You can create your own scripting. But we also have an out-of-the-box feature called uh, Excel Automation, which if you fit into the category of similar but different, my goodness, could you take advantage of Excel Automation. I know that other CAD tool has something similar for creating IOs, but ours can create the entire package, all from our reference drawings, one lines, schematics, layouts. Uh, and then with the API, we can fully automate that process with external to the application. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of benefits, but you know, the core ones I would say is database reliability and speed, uh, report configurations, uh, source and destination. We all, you know, both applications are all intelligent CAD tools deal with intelligent symbols and wires. Um, but, you know, really I, another differentiator is our ecosystem of how we can integrate with other things, such as our integration into mechanical, our integration into PDM. Those are really some other strong suits that, you know, if, if those make sense for you, then, um, you know, then we kind of really set ourselves apart when we talk about further systems integration. Yeah, one thing I would add to that is is uh, and you covered it a little bit, but uh, macro creation, which is the nice thing with that. I don't I don't even know if you mentioned it, but if I create a macro, if I'm on a network installation and I have multiple users and I create a macro, essentially a, a big circuit, right? As soon as I create that macro and give it a name, it is now a part of my database, and everybody else can use it as well. So now, if I, you know, I just spent 15 minutes building this symbol or that entire project, right? And the next person doesn't have to go and find that old project, copy paste it. It's already a macro built into your library. And now they just simply need to insert it as a, uh, as a new, either several sheets or one sheet into their new project. So you've just saved an additional 15 minutes um, building that out. Yeah. All right. We'll take, let's see here. We got two more here. Uh, well, we have a few more, but we, I think we have enough time for maybe two more. Does this link to SOLIDWORKS to route harnesses? <laughs> yes. So we have an add-in in the SOLIDWORKS Electrical 3D. And essentially, it is allows SOLIDWORKS Mechanical to communicate into that SQL database so we can share project information between the two organizations. As we populate the schematics, those components can become available to the mechanical guys who can connect those up. Uh, once they're associated, all that wire connection um, to from information is brought over and so that we can route um, accordingly. So, you know, within that our library, I mentioned that we can map a schematic part, a panel layout 2D schematic to a manufacturer's part, but we can also map and manage the 3D models as well, really helping streamline um, the mechanical side as well. So definitely we connect. It, it is an add-in into SOLIDWORKS called Electrical 3D. And yes, uh, to follow up question with that, it does auto, you you can auto route, you have the ability to do um, auto routing based off of your schematic into your model. Now there is some setup involved in that, but it is doable. And then you also have the ability to utilize some of the electrical routing, tubing, piping features as well in SOLIDWORKS Premium. Uh, let's see here. There was one about importing data. I can't find it now, but I, I read it a second ago. Okay. Do you import part number catalog into? Yes. Okay, so I'll take this one. Yes. So part number information can definitely be imported. Um, so it's uh, is it an XML or XLS? You know, so we can bring it from Excel in different formats to import manufacturer's part number data. So we can do take advantage of that. One thing SOLIDWORKS Electrical does really well is taking advantage of your legacy data. And it, that it, within that same question is, can you import catalog data into SOLIDWORKS Electrical? They ask, can you also import AutoCAD Electrical blocks and components that have been created? The answer is yes. We have an import wizard that allows us to select a folder or individual blocks that were created in another CAD tool. Um, and then it allows us to map those attributes into the SOLIDWORKS electrical attributes, and that symbol is imported ready to go. Depending on how it was created, there might be some cleanup, but um, there is some great tools. We can import your title blocks. We can import your symbols, your um, 
footprints, you know, your manufacturer's part numbers. So yes, all around. Um, one more. How about one more? I think there's one, one more. more. One report. I think it's that long one closer to the bottom here. Yeah, it's about, I think, design rule checks. Correct. Yep. Uh, when All a report, right. you want to read it? No, you go ahead. All right. When a report is created, which states electrical errors are in your design, which exact standards are used to define the error? An example uh, would be the report be would the report be able to define an error specific to my location and its specific electrical standards? So, so I, go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, no. So the way the way it works, so Thomas showed reports. There's also another uh, another type of report that is called design rule checks, um, and those are run. You can run those concurrently while you're doing your reports as well. Um, and my favorite terminology and and comes this goes for adding your manufacturer parts, creating symbols, everything, even creating your reports, queries, whatever you're doing. Garbage in, garbage out. The more information you put into your project. The more information you put into your manufacturer parts and symbols and so on, the better you can create these design rule checks as well as create your reports. So based on your question, um, I can create a very valuable design rule check. Now, the design rule checks that we we have in the software, they are um, they're used. They're they're generic, right? You can always add additional information to it, but it's very if it's very specific information that you want to put into that. Then um, again, it would take a little bit of more, just a little bit more uh, being robust with with the tool and and getting get a little deeper uh, into some of the features to get that out. But there's nothing that says you couldn't create a report specifically for that. Yep. Correct. Um, yes. The and the uh, last question that just popped up. Yes. The this tool originally a lot of the symbols were developed in Spain, so there are there's a lot of tool a lot of symbols that are IEC compliant. Um, and the last question is: Is this webinar recorded? Mm -hmm. And I'll let you answer that one, and you can finish it, it off. It is. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so yeah, the webinar is definitely uh, recorded. So you know, about 24 hours from now, all you guys will see, receive an email thanking you for attending, and there will be a link to the recording. Uh, in that. So um, yeah, again, I appreciate you guys taking the time to, to watch this. I hope you saw something valuable. Um, and if you're currently using, you know, a standard CAD tool, you know, it, it's le at least worth a look uh, because, you know, they're, again, technology is advanced. We might as well jump on board and start taking advantage of that. So uh, thanks for your time. Um, and we look forward to working with you guys more. So enjoy the rest of your day, everyone.